Well, hello everyone and welcome to the Vantage Seminar. Today we're continuing our series on Arithmetic Statistics 2. We're very happy to have Stephanie Chan, who will speaking, be speaking on integral points on elliptic curves. Stephanie, is it all right for me to video this talk? Yes, Sadiq. Wonderful. Okay, please go ahead. Um, thank you for the organizers for putting everything together and the opportunity um, for me to speak here. Uh, so I'll talk about integral points on elliptic curves. And in particular, I like to think about um, the sort of the distribution of the number of integral points in, in certain elliptic curve families. Um, so before I uh, sort of go on to state uh, results that are related to um, integral points. Um, first, I guess we need to first define exactly what integral points we're looking at because number of integral points actually def depends on the, the model that we take. So um, I'll, in this talk, I will assume that uh, I'll take elliptic curves uh, over the, the rationals um, and I'll take the short Verschaft form so y squared equals x cubed plus ax plus b, um, where a, b are um, integers. And we'll also assume that um, this is a quasi-minimal uh, uh, short fresh form. So in particular, we assume uh, that uh, if you have any prime uh, taken to the fourth power dividing uh, the coefficient a, then we must not have that uh, p to the six divides b. So uh, this is a quasi uh, minimal uh, short square form. I'll just put quasi minimal. Um, the discriminant of uh, this elliptic curve depends on a and b. So I'll just write down the formula for this. Um, so for this to be an elliptic curve, we must need that uh, the discriminant is not zero. So, um, okay. So the reason we take the, um, the quasi-minimal model is because um, we want to avoid uh, the we want to avoid a case that the integral point is actually from rescaling the rational point. Um, the integral points um, on this curve I'll write as E, uh, E, uh, Z, which will be the, they're actually rational points on the curve, but uh, with X and Y coordinates being integers. Okay, so this set changes if you decided to um, transform the the Verschaft model into something else. If you do any rational transformation, right, the the integral points may not stay as an integral point. Um, and on the other hand, you might have rational points that becomes an integral by sort of rescaling the model. So having a quasi taking the quasi minimal model here. Uh, so, whoops. So taking the quasi-minimal model, uh, meaning that I'm assuming this assumption here, uh, means that I'm avoiding the situation where the integral point is actually sort of a rational scaling of a rational point. Um, so throughout this talk, I'll assume that I have uh, the, the setup for any elliptic curves I, I talk about. Um, so a theorem by model, so model proved that actually uh, the number of integral points is uh, bounded in only any specific elliptic curves. This count is always finite. And uh, we can also obtain sort of upper bounds uh, on the number of integral points on each elliptic curves, um, usually uh, depending, to, uh, depending on the elliptic curve in some way. Uh, and a conjecture by Lang um, suggests that um, the 
number of integral points should uh, be bounded above. Oops. Um, only depending on the rank of the curve. Okay, so there are various results on the uh, uh, um, various upper bounds that are proven for, for a number of integral points, but uh, the most general form of Lang's conjecture is, is not proven yet. So this is still kind of a, an open problem. Uh, but there are partial results um, towards uh, Lang's conjecture. So one of them uh, is a theorem by Henry Silverman. Um, and they obtain an upper bound of the form uh, uh, constant, uh, um, less and less than a constant to a power of rank plus one times uh, oops, the spiral ratio, which I'll denote as sigma. So here, sigma is the spiral ratio. So that's log of the discriminant over log of the conductor. So a serious ratio is conjectured to be to be bounded, um, and I think it's why they believe that's bounded. Um, the rank, on the other hand, uh, may be a little bit more controversial, but I guess more recently, I think uh, a lot of people are believing that the rank might be bounded. So if we actually believe that the rank is bounded and also believe that serious ratio is bounded, then actually there should be some absolute number that bounds the number of integral points somehow. Uh, but of course, um, proving any of those uh, uh, conjecture is maybe very difficult and probably out of reach at the moment. Um, so we might think, uh, well, we can't get, an, it's very difficult to get an absolute upper bound, but we can maybe try and average it uh, in some family and uh, see if we can get an upper bound that way. Uh, so let's look at sort of some average results or density results. Um, so if we want to think about um, this problem on average, we need to have some ordering on the curves somehow. So the ordering we impose here is um, uh, order ordering by naive height. Uh, which is the maximum of uh, four a cubed and 27 b squared. So we might, uh, sometimes be interested in ordering by discriminant or by conductor, but I guess, or usually it's easier to prove things ordering by height. Uh, okay, so uh, result in this direction uh, by uh, Levent Alpogay is that actually 100% of the curves um, of elliptic curves oops, satisfies um, an upper bound of the form uh, three to the R. So we take all of the, all uh, elliptic curves in their um, uh, short Bachrass form, um, and then. Uh, with this, with this ordering, 100% of them satisfy uh, the upper bound of uh, some constant times three to the R, uh, R being the rank of the elliptic curve. Uh, so this is uh, um, one part of the result. 
the other part of the result that's um, um, he proved is that the average of the number of integral points is actually uh, bounded above by a uh, constant. So uh, maybe I should just define exactly uh, what this average means. So that's a lim soup of, um, if we take the first n curves, uh, sorry, first, um, the all the elliptic curves of heights up to n, and then take the average of the number of integral points. Right. And then taking uh, n towards infinity, this uh, limb soup here is bounded above by some constant less than 66. So the, the idea of the proof, the main idea, which uh, I'm going to over, oversimplify it, is that uh, um, um, to, to, prove, um, to prove two, um, is to, the, the way to prove two is to average a pointwise bound of, of the form uh, one. Um, and then apply Uh, the um, average of the uh, the known result on average of the five cell learn, which is six, uh, which is by uh, Bargava and Shaka. Okay, so the five cell learn here acts as an upper bound on the uh, um, on sort of five to the rank. So average um, of five to the rank is bounded above by the average of five salver. So, um, and in turn, uh, this bound of three to the R um, is less than this five to the R. So um, with a pointwise bound of this form and uh, an average result on the five salver, um, um, you'll be able to get a, a, an upper bound that's an explicit number here. Okay. So this is like the rough idea, at least to deduce two from, from one here. Of course, I'm hiding a lot of details and there's a lot of work um, in sort of proving a version of one that works here. But uh, yeah, so there is an absolute um, number that bounds the, uh, average rank somehow. Uh, the truth though here that uh, I believe uh, is that we should able to actually get these upper bounds uh, here, three to the R to zero, and this average here to the, should also be zero somehow. So the conjecture here is that 100% of curves um, should satisfy an upper bound of, well, that should, should, should have no integral points essentially. And that the average number of integral points um, should also be zero. Oops. So actually the statement here, uh, the second statement here too is actually stronger than one right? because um, if you sort of write write out the uh, the the sum here that we are looking at in the in the limit and uh, uh, the number of of integral points in the the sum is always greater than one and we will just replace this count as one um, then um, the second statement would imply this first statement uh, at least I mean the standard statement of a hundred curves being uh, having no integral points. And uh, so, yeah, so note that two implies one. Oops. And we should also, um, another thing to note is that we should also expect that um, the, the conjecture to hold 
for um, any uh, reasonable family, which I'm not gonna I'm not gonna define what a re what reasonable family means here. Uh, and also after uh, removing any trivial points. So, of course, you need some kind of, uh, as in you, you can't take any family, so to speak, because say if you take off elliptic curves with at least one integral points, then obviously the, the average is not going to be zero. But if you take any rational, fa uh, any reasonable family in the sense that the restrictions in this family are not, does not interview with um, having an integral point. Then um, after removing any trivial points, uh, we should expect that the number of integral points should be zero on average. And uh, the trivial points here, um, I don't mean just the point at infinity. Um, and I will I will talk about I'll talk a little bit more about uh, what integral what trivial what the trivial points might be when I uh, talk about the uh, quadratic twist family. So it depends on the kind of family you pick. There might be uh, some integral points that's already built into your family. So in, in, in that case, uh, those are the trivial points that you might need to remove. Okay, so, um, right. so before I move on to some specific families that I've uh, looked at, so for example, the quadratus family. Uh, so before I do that, I want to maybe give um, some related well, give a related question as to um, sort of to maybe motivate why we care about uh, integral points on the elliptic curve sometimes. Um, a related open question here. Um, it's a question of uh, counting or estimating uh, the uh, number of um, number of elliptic curves ordering by discriminant. So we might want to estimate the number of rational um, elliptic curves um, taking uh, uh, the isomorph of some classes, and we want to uh, order by the minimal discriminant, and we might want to estimate the size of this set here. So we want to count the number of elliptic curves up to some discriminant. Um, and uh, this problem is equivalent to counting um, elliptic curve, uh, counting integral points. on uh, the elliptic curve y squared uh, because x cubed minus 171, uh, 1728 uh, um, times the discriminant. So here the discriminant has to be less than or equal to n in this uh, set. So the question becomes counting the number of integral points in this family here. Uh, a heuris heuristic uh, um, heuristics Oops. Okay. So Brumer and Ms. McGinnis. Oops. gave some heuristics on this um, estimate. And um, heuristically, this set should be um, of the size some constant times, uh, I'll just write some constant c times uh, n to the 5, 6. So um, if we want to count the uh, count elliptic curves with uh, this one bound by n, it's related to counting integral points. And this problem is open, even um, giving sort of an upper bound that uh, um, 
sort of um, that's significantly smaller than n is sort of uh, still open. Uh, right, so it'll be interesting to even show that this family here actually um, has, uh, um, on average, has zero uh, integral points. So if you can show that, so what I mean, what I mean is, if you can show that the average of number of integral points in this family is zero, then you kind of have proven this case uh, of this open question. At least it's a weak. It's not uh, exactly this. It might be hard to it to get um, this um, exact estimate, but at least you get something that's uh, much closer than what we know uh, for now. Okay, so this is why we why we might care about um, integral points in families. Um, so uh, a different family that I've worked on uh, that's not directly relevant to this uh, open question, so to speak, um, is the family of um, uh, of uh, the, the quadratic twist family of uh, cargo number curves. So um, here I want to start restricting to uh, quadratic twist families. Okay, so we might fix now, uh, we might fix one elliptic curve now. So fix one elliptic curve with the coefficients a and b. Um, and then we consider the quadratic twists. Um, I'll just write e sub d. E squared x plus b d cubed. Okay, so now ordering by height is the same as ordering by the size of d. It's also the same as ordering by discriminants in this family. So let's order naturally by d, which we can assume um, to be uh, an integer and positive. So the trivial points in this case um, are actually the points that are poten potentially the points that are uh, uh, in the rational torsion. Um, so actually the non-trivial non, uh, points here are, let me define, um, On trivial integral points um, to be the points um, that are integral and with y, uh, the y coordinate not equal to zero. So these are actually removing the two torsion, the rational two torsion of uh, the, the, the uh, from the set of integral points. So if you start with uh, an elliptic curve with rational two torsion, then um, these two torsion might contribute to integral points. And as you twist it, all the um, elliptic curves in this family will have this, uh, these uh, integral two torsion points. So for example, if I want to be more specific, um, I will take the uh, quadratic twist family of uh, the congruent number curve. So you can see here that actually zero comma zero and plus or minus d comma zero, these are all integral points and they lie in. Um, 
and and they lie in sort of all all of these curves in this family actually all have these three um, integral points. Okay, so the conjecture here, which is just kind of a different version of the conjecture I uh, stated before, but for now I'm stating this for um, uh, the quadratic twist family. That, uh, so now I fix an E and then I twist them. So 100% of E um, Um, one hundred percent of the curves in this family satisfy uh, uh, that the set um one hundred percent of the curves in this family has no uh, non-trivial um, integral points. This is uh, for quadratic twist. This is actually a version of a conjecture by Granville. Um, and uh, of course, you can also state the average version of this. And uh, now I'm just counting all the curves, uh, the, all the points on curves. Um, with D up to N. And uh, D being square free is um, uh, comes from the minimal uh, condition on the Bershaw's model. So I should we say here that D um, is positive integer and has to be square free. This is the same condition as saying uh, the model is a, a quasi minimal Bershaw's form. Okay, so we have the corresponding conjecture for uh, the quadratus family. And again, the second statement here implies the first statement. So the second statement is actually a stronger statement. Um, a theorem uh, conditioning on uh, the ABC conjecture uh, by uh, Maschke and um, Digonda um, the they they impose a mild restriction which is um, um on, well they impose some condition on the uh, curve that they're taking so probably not that mild so they assume that uh, the polynomial x cubed plus ax plus b, which defines the uh, elliptic curve. So um, in other words, um, there is a, uh, there is a, a two torsion point. And uh, then uh, also conditioning on ABC conjecture. Um, they proved a version of uh, the first statement. And so they looked at quadratic twist families um, of uh, an elliptic, uh, of quadratic twist of an elliptic curve with a rational distortion. Um, then they showed that ABC conjecture implies that 100% of the curves in this family has no on trivial uh, integral points. All right, so um, something I've worked on um, is that I took a particular um, elliptic curve, uh, which is the Kogo number curve. So the quadratic twist of y squared equals x cubed minus x. And I show that um, for this particular family, at least the average 
um, is indeed zero. Okay, so the saving you get here is log m to the minus one eighth plus some small epsilon. Um, so this is a, on the left-hand side, this is a sum of all in, non-trivial integral points up, uh, with d up to n. So there are n um, elliptic curves here in the sum. So if you divide out n from both sides, um, so there's some constant times so there's some constant times n elliptic curves uh, on, that, are, that are in the sum, or you should just think of it as order n, um, and to divide out uh, n uh, from both sides, you see you get this log n to the power of minus one eighth plus epsilon, which would tend to uh, zero as you take n towards infinity. So this proves that, oops, this implies that the average in this family uh, is zero. Right, so I'll uh, move on to give some ideas that goes into the proof. Um, and maybe I should justify why I'm taking this specific family as well. So, proof for um, this fact. So one reason here um, of taking this family is a theorem by Heath Brown. That's uh, specific for this family. Um, so for this family, um, I'll just write, uh, okay. For this, uh, for this specific family, he found computed all um, moments of the two summer. Okay, so uh, the estimates for um, the k moment for each k um, is computed very explicitly. There's a formula to find all these constants c k uh, um, in in Heath Brown's paper. So with with this particular result, if we combine the known cases of Lang's conjecture, so in particular, Lang's conjecture holds for the specific family. Combining with known cases of Lang's conjecture, um, which means that the number of integral points is less than less than c to the rank. Um, this also actually follows from the result from uh, by Hindry and Silverman that I've stated. Um, because real ratio is bound and then quadratic to this family, you can um, get a known upper bound for from uh, Lang's conjecture if you try to combine um, these two results. Because uh, note that the rank is bounded above by the summer rank. Um, if we even um, if we raise this to some uh, exponent k, you'll uh, just get a different constant here, raised to the power of r. And uh, this here, okay, the Selmer part here is two to the uh, Selmer rank. I mean, two to the 
to Sabarek, or maybe I should say, I'll just write here. So you have uh, C to the rank um, less than or equal to cell to uh, two summer raised to the power of K, as long as K is large enough. So combining these two results, um, we have that actually the um, the moment of the number of integral points are all bounded. in terms of K. Um, the results depend on D having a lot of prime factors. Um, I think um, if D has no, uh, sort of not the, the, if D has either too few or um, too many prime factors, so sort of not the generic D, then it doesn't contribute to the, to the sums anyway. But of course, this is not immediately the case. But I think in the proofs, um, D without, sort of D not having the usual log log and uh, number of prime factors uh, will not contribute or um, it doesn't contribute in the argument. So it will, it will be stuff, stuff that can be thrown out anyway. Um, I hope that answers the question in the chat. Right, so for this specific family, we have that the uh, moments of the number of the points are actually all bounded, that is helpful in the sense that we can actually now throw out uh, the Ds that are sort of non-generic in some sense. So this is like this is one of the reasons why we uh, pick this specific family. And uh, there are also there's also another application. Um, Of, uh, the, the, of Heath Brown's argument in the proof, which I will get to in a moment. Um, but uh, one of the main ideas in the proof is to use models correspondence. So uh, this is um, bijection, so correspondence between integral points on elliptic curves and uh, certain integral quartic forms So here, uh, this is an integral quartic forms and these C, D and E here are integers and uh, there's some congruence condition here satisfied. And in particular, the uh, discriminants of the integral quartic form and the discriminant of the uh, elliptic curves are related some way, it somehow kind of preserves whatever discriminant that we started with. So there's a specific formula for the, um, I mean, there, there are some specific formulas that go from the integral points to uh, the particular quadratic integral points that we get. It's very explicit. You can, uh, given any point, you can just write down the formula for the um, integral quartic form. 
uh, that you get out of it. Um, we can also kind of think of this as uh, the binary, well, integral binary, Quartic forms that uh, represent one. So if you notice here, the leading coefficient in this um, specific formula here, the uh, leading coefficient is one. So that means that if we plug, if we plug in x equals one and y equals zero, you're just going to get one from the uh, right hand side, which uh, gives you an so this means that this form here is actually um, an integral uh, quartic form that represents one. And also think of it uh, uh, in their uh, corresponding um, uh, SL to Z equivalence classes. So if you uh, prefer thinking of uh, um, SL to Z equivalence classes over just a set of um, uh, binary quartic uh, forms, then um, this is kind of the characterizations of what you would get from the right-hand side. There is some small condition here on the um, coefficients, but that um, isn't super important when you're trying to count them. So that's kind of a small thing. But the, the major thing here is that these are the forms that represents one, which is what's hard to capture most of the time. Um, counting uh, equivalence classes of integral binary quartic forms are usually more tractable, but uh, figuring out exactly which um, represents one is maybe the harder thing when you try to count. Okay. So the idea here is that uh, um, is to try and kind of reduce um, the set of uh, integral binary quartic forms that we have to consider so that we have fewer forms. Um, and we try to kind of maybe loosen this condition here somehow. So the, so the important lemma here is uh, a discriminant reducing lemma. Suppose you have an uh, integral point um, for this specific family. Um, and we take the uh, take F to be the quartic form Um, in the image. Of uh, the point. So uh, in models correspondence, we're taking the uh, quartic forms on the right hand side that corresponds to the integral points that we're taking. And suppose also we can find an auxiliary prime. such that P divides D, but does not divide X. So to avoid the primes two and three, I'll just assume that it does not divide six as well. So suppose we can find this prime that divides D, but does not divide the X coordinate. Um, then uh, there exists some integer K such that the transformation here um, gives you a new uh, quadratic, uh, sorry, um, binary uh, quadratic form. Um, also integral, so it also has integral coefficients.
And moreover, um, satisfies uh, two things. One is that uh, the discriminant of this form, this new form, is the original discriminant um, divided by p to the six. And this is also an integer because um, it's an, uh, the new form is also uh, an integral binary cortic. And maybe I should mention here that uh, the, originally the uh, elliptic curve has discriminant to the to the six. So with this relationship here in the correspondence, the form that you take out from this left-hand side will also have a high power of D. So it also has a D to the six. And since you, pick, you have picked the prime to divide D, this is clearly an integer as well. You're kind of dividing P to the six from this discriminant here. Um, so this is the first uh, property. The second property that it also satisfies that this represents now uh, P, the integer. So satisfy kind of two properties here. There's something going on with the discriminant. There's also um, now it, it, it also, the other thing is that now it represents P. So we saw that with a form with a discriminant, uh, something like D to the six and represents one. And now after the reduction uh, in discriminant, it has a smaller discriminant because you're dividing out by P to the six, but now it represents a larger number here. It represents P instead of one. Okay, so um, this is the main lemma. And I'll just say briefly sort of how this is applied. So the main ideas of the proof. Um, there are two things that goes into it. So the first thing is that, uh, well, of course, we you apply, we try to apply the discriminant reducing lemma. We try to reduce uh, the discriminant by some large P. Um, if you're interested, this is uh, approximately um, e to the log um, d to some uh, power. This is the kind of d, uh, the size of the d that we pick. Then uh, by um, sort of applying this lemma, um, with this uh, size of um, P, then we are left with um, little o of n uh, many forms. Uh, which we can um, count using the invariance of the forms and uh, so on. Um, but the key problem here is maybe this condition here. So we have to find some large P, which is uh, finding a large P that divides D is maybe not too hard if D is generic in some sense, but we need to take into account that this prime, this auxiliary prime that we take cannot divide the X coordinate of the uh, integral points. So here we use, this is where um, we use Heath-Brown's work uh, the second time. So from Heath-Brown's argument, we can show that for 100% of the curves, we can find P uh, of the goods of a good size, the size we want. Um, for every non-trivial point.
It doesn't follow exactly from Hugh Brown's uh, statement, um, but uh, it does follow, it's something that you could just take out from uh, the proof uh, on the two sum. So after we've done that, we have now fewer forms, but then one form can correspond to multiple integral points that we started with, right? because we've kind of mapped, um, we might have mapped uh, several of these um, quartic forms that represent one into uh, one, um, um, in, into the same uh, new uh, binary quartic form. So the second thing we need to do is to make sure that um, we can't have multiple, we can't have too many um, um, integral points that correspond to one resulting quartic form. And here, uh, this is related to um, solutions to two is inequality. Um, each um, discriminant reduced form Um, can only be uh, the image of uh, very few points. Um, because these forms have to represent this auxiliary prime P and uh, this P is kind of small relative to the discriminant of the form. And uh, because, so, so uh, applying some bounds on the uh, solutions to the two inequality. Um, this has very few solutions. as long as H is small relative to the discriminant. So um, another way to, to view this is that um, one uh, integral binary quartic form um, basically cannot represent too many small numbers. And because by construction, each form represents the p that we apply the um, the reduction on. It cannot correspond to too many of these p's because um, this two is inequalities cannot have too many solutions. So um, in this way, we can conclude that actually, um, for the very few quartic forms that we have left, like little o of n quartic forms that we have left, each of them cannot correspond to too many um, integral points. Um, so in that way, we get a saving um, in number of integral points. So those are the main ideas in the proof. Um, so I'm almost out of time. I'll just mention kind of one related result um, that kind of also applies some similar um, ideas, which is for the cubic twist family. So. There are some similarities in um, quadratic twist and cubic twist families. Um, in some way, we can also we can think of it as also uh, th that we can also apply um, some uh, transformation to the quartic form, or in the cubic twist cubic twist case, we can actually obtain some uh, cubic forms instead of quartic forms, and then we can also apply. Uh, a transformation to reduce the discriminant of the forms. So the cubic twist case that I'm able to prove um, is that uh, for this for this specific family, which I will state. So if I fix some integer um, k that's not zero or one, that's square three, and I'm gonna let uh, my uh, cubic twist to take this form x cubed plus k d squared. Um, then uh, for a hundred percent of the curves in this family, 
there are uh, no integral points. So this is kind of a weaker version of the result I have for uh, the quadratic twist family of congruent number curves because this only shows 100% uh, of curves has no points, but it doesn't show that the average is zero. Um, um, a main problem here is that we don't have something as strong as Heath Brown. We don't know that uh, the moments of uh, integral points are bounded. So there might be, you can't rule out the case where there might be some curves with a lot of points um, that sort of skew the distribution. Um, but at least we're able to um, prove a uh, hundred percent in this case. So I think this is a good point to stop. I'll stop here. Thank you.